Good morning. Our group of five Vietnam veterans has been meeting every Tuesday evening at five o'clock for the past two years. We're called a combat focus group sponsored by the Veterans Counseling Center in Concord. All the men have been diagnosed with PTSD and are at least 70% disabled. Mike, the facilitator, is an Iraqi war veteran and as, as well as a therapist. Recently, Mike opened the discussion by saying, let's do something different. Our check-ins had become quite routine. With all of us over 70, I got tired of hearing the latest updates on everyone's medical condition. <laughs> the organ recital. <laughs> John was still having trouble losing weight and struggling with high blood pressure. Nelson's insomnia was worse, and his psychiatrist has cha had changed his depression meds again. Eric was concerned about his memory problems and was struggling to keep his diabetes under control, and I self-diagnosed that I was dying of boredom. <laughs> Mike smiled and announced, let's get out of ourselves and think about someone else for a change. I would like to go around the room and have each one of you tell us about someone you served with in combat who changed your life. The room was quiet for uh, several moments, and then Nick spoke. Sergeant Tandy was my platoon sergeant. I was his radio operator. He looked down at his hands and continued. He died for me. We were ambushed and the fighting was heavy. We were laying side by side just off a trail as he used the radio to call an airstrike. Suddenly, three North Vietnamese charged toward Tandy and me. He scooted over on top of me and fired at them. Two of them dropped, but the third fired a burst of rounds into the sergeant. I wasn't hit, but Tandy was dead. He sure enough saved my life. John waited for a moment and then picked it up next. Sam Sosa was a middle, excuse me, Sam Sosa was a medic in my unit and my best friend. We were on a search and destroy operation outside of Play Coup when we got into a hell of a firefight. I was shot twice in the chest, but Sammy was right there. He patched me up and cheered me on. Sam was wounded in the right thigh. When the medevac chopper arrived, we loaded Sam and me on the stretchers. Soon we were about to lift off when someone hollered, medic. Sam slowly got off the chopper and headed back into the firefight, dragging his wounded leg. John shook his head and placed his right hand over his heart. He then told us about his trip to the field hospital and the ensuing chest surgery. I was out of it for several days. When I finally became clear-headed, I, I, I was and asked about Sam, I was told several that he had saved three other guys that afternoon, but died of blood loss as he was being evacuated on the last helicopter. I'll never forget Sam. Next, Nelson cleared his throat and said, Corporal Tommy Taggart was a quiet guy in my Marine squad. He was very shy. On that day, it was my turn to walk point, but I had a fever and chills, which would turn out to be malaria. We finished our break, and as I started to walk up to the point position, excuse me, as he started to walk up to the point position, Tommy tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, Nelson, you don't look so good. Why do you care? I responded. Tommy smiled and said, you need to be alert up there. I thought I would like to walk point this afternoon. I'm getting bored back here at the end of the column. In my feverish condition, I was glad to not have to walk the most dangerous position at the head of the platoon. I agreed and thanked him. An hour later, we walked right into an ambush. We took heavy casualties, but I was well back with my squad and was safe from harm. Tommy was the first to die. Now Eric leaned forward, gripping his chair. We were uh, set up for a night ambush on a small river outside in a train. Sampans, those small boats, had been bringing uh, ammunition and, and AK-47s up the river and delivering them to a local Viet Cong unit. Around 3 a.m., we spotted two sampans. Viet Congs were standing at the, uh, on the lead sampan and could be seen 
holding AK-47 machine guns. As I inch closer to the riverbank to move into a better firing position, the edge gave way and I fell headfirst into the dark murky water. Being a machine gunner, I had about 40 pounds of ammunition belts wrapped around my neck like a shawl. With all that weight, I sank straight to the bottom. There I was, stuck in the mud, 10 feet below the surface. I couldn't move. I knew I was going to die. Panic gripped me, and I was soon inhaling water. Suddenly, I found myself being dragged to a shallower area where I gained my footing. My head came out of the water. I coughed, and I sputtered, and I gasped for air. When I opened my eyes, I stared directly into the face of Willie Wilson, an African-American sergeant whom I hated. Eric took a deep breath and exhaled. Being from Alabama, he continued, I was prejudiced back then and had ignored Sergeant Wilson. But that night in the river, I exclaimed, you saved me, man. You saved me. This is my lucky day. Sergeant Willie Wilson smiled and said, yeah, this is my lucky day, too. I can't swim. <laughs> We hugged each other and our relationship changed from that day on. Eric nodded and grinned and looked around the room at the rest of us. Now it was Mike's turn. Now it was my turn. Mike prompted me. You're up, Jim. <clears throat> I looked around the room and said Sergeant Major Frank Hillman was the unit commander in Project Delta, which meant my reconnaissance team was under his command. I'd been running recon teams for more than 17 months. I recently found myself praying more as I could not shake the premonition of my death. One evening back in base camp, I was sitting on a bar stool uh, with a beer in front of me, just waiting for something to happen, and I didn't know what. My best friend Drew had been killed on a recon mission just a week earlier. Sergeant Hillman brought over a pitcher of beer, a glass, and said, Drew's loss must be really painful for you. I nodded and looked away. What's on your mind? When you can't go to sleep, what are you thinking about? I think I'm going to be next. I can see it happening and I don't see any way out. Well, you've been dancing with the devil for about, about a year and a half, Sergeant Hillman said. I wouldn't say your odds are more of a reality than a premonition. I've got some news for you. I was silent. Down in Chi Lang Special Forces Camp, they need someone with a top secret security clearance to work a radio teletype machine. Or should I say, who can learn to work a radio teletype machine. <laughs> you got the clearance. I considered offering you this opportunity, but on second thought, I'm sending you down there. A week later, I was sitting at a desk in Chi Lang. I received a situation report that my old recon team, Viper, had been inserted on a mission at dawn that morning and had immediately made contact with a large unit of North Vietnamese regulars. They reported they were under heavy fire and surrounded. The team has not been heard from since. I felt sick. I managed to get the radio call through to Project Delta and learned that two ranger companies, about 90 men, had been dropped into the area to try to find Viper with negative results. Viper had disappeared. My former assistant team leader, Mike Hudgens, had been my replacement. All I could think about was that I was sitting safely in a bunker 450 miles south of where I should have been. Mike and five other men were either dead or wished they were. Because Sergeant Major Hillman had made the call, I was alive. It was 6.30 and time for our group to end. Lots of memories and feelings had been dredged up. We stood in and gathered in a circle with our arms around each other's shoulders for our closing ceremony. Mike spoke. Well, Memorial Day is coming up on Monday. I think you all have someone to remember. 
May we never forget those who came before us and made decisions and sacrifices that forever affected our lives.